Hey, Animals at Work watchers, welcome to another great episode. All over the planet, there are millions of animals that have jobs. This is the show that brings you the funniest, coolest, and most bizarre animals at work. Here's what we got for you. Hercules the hero was saving endangered baby turtles. Hercules, he never gives up and he never surrenders. Dakota's a model with laziness issues. Yeah. He just kind of does the same pose. He doesn't like to move around too much. Go, come on. And the Fanimal's attempt at hurting sheep goes to the dogs. But now it's showtime. Hi, everybody. This is Animals at Work, where we don't kid around. <laughs> what a bad joke. Barrow man, you really get my goat. Roll the tape. Let's meet our first animal at work on the Pacific coast of Costa Rica. Hercules has quite the life. A beautiful sandy beach, a gorgeous blue ocean, a super cool owner and a friend who loves to play. It's just like one big holiday for Hercules. But looks can be deceptive because Hercules is actually a hero! Hercules is an environmental warrior saving baby turtles from extinction. He works at this conservation project where he's responsible for protecting the turtles from the moment they're laid as eggs right up until they finally hatch and make their way to the ocean. And looking after turtles is a job that's becoming more and more important. Marine turtles have been swimming in the world's oceans for 100 million years, but today's species like the olive ridley turtles are at risk of becoming extinct. Their population is dwindling fast, and that's why Hercules must save as many as he can. Helping Hercules is wildlife expert Ricardo. Hercules, he never gives up and he never surrenders. It's the end of the rainy season and the busiest time of year for Hercules. Every night, pregnant marine turtles arrive at his beach and make nests by burying their eggs in the sand. In a year, over a million eggs get laid, but only a fraction of the turtles will survive to adulthood. To help their chances of survival, Hercules constantly patrols with Ricardo, finding nests and protecting them from predators who pose a risk to the eggs. Animals like coatis, hawks, and vultures. But it's human poachers who do the most damage, stealing the eggs to sell illegally. We need help all the time against the poaching activity. Yes, even a hero like Hercules can need help, which is where this guy comes in. Meet Neron. This intimidating team strikes fear into the hearts of predators and poachers alike. Yeah, he, he, he helps us all the time, both of us. And what looks like two dogs having fun on a beach is a lot more than that. It's actually heroes in training. They need to play to stay more active. As long as they play all day long, they will help us even more with the patrols. Training over and it's time to go to work. A new day dawns and Hercules is already at work conducting his daily beach patrol. We set patrols to look for the nests. This little fellow looked for the nest by smelling the tracks. His superior sniffer is 100,000 times better at finding a scent than yours or mine. But so far today, he's not found anything. But what's this? Is he onto something? Oh yes, it looks like Hercules has picked up a scent. He's found the tracks of a mother turtle, which led him straight to a nest. Oh no, a predator got here first. 
But have any of the eggs survived? Later, we'll find out if Ricardo and Hercules can find any surviving eggs. We've searched the internet to find out what animals get up to on their days off. Check out this surprise little kitty. Aww, this is so cute. Now those kids who love animals. It's the Fanimals, yes! Meet the Fanimals, our animal detectives. Joss, Holly, Hannah, and Jack. Today they'll be testing who can herd sheep the fastest. Is it Fanimal? Or Animal? This is Moss, a six-year-old border collie and professional sheepdog. And this is Bob the Shepherd who's here to make sure the sheep are kept safe throughout the competition. The competitors will have to herd sheep as fast as they can from the open pasture into the gated enclosure. Sheep tend to quickly flee in panic in the face of the slightest stress, so herding them is a very difficult task requiring patience, experience, and skill. But contrary to popular belief, sheep aren't stupid. <laughs> Reports suggest they can be quite clever and even devious. Let's hope they don't try and trick the Fanimals today. Lucky for them, they'll have Bob by their side. But they've got their work cut out. Moss is a pro, and as a Border Collie, has all the right skills. Speed, stamina, and agility. Hurting the sheep first are the... Fanimals! To win, they've got to herd the sheep into the enclosure faster than moss. Ready, steady, go! The Fanimals are off to a running start. They're trying to steer the sheep by running alongside them. Seems like a good plan, but what's this? They can't keep the group together. Wave your arms about. The sheep are going everywhere. Well, everywhere other than the pen. Bad luck, kids. We've lost them. Time to rethink their strategy. Make it so if you make a circle. Let's see if things go better. They're certainly good at making the sheep move. Okay. But it's still not working. The sheep are all over the place. Until they're ready for it. But after one last rethink and a lot more running around. And some help from the shepherd. Run along the fence. Arms about. Yeah, well done. They finally done it. Well done, Fanimals. But that seemed like it took a long time. Can Moss do it any quicker? There he goes. Moss really knows how to keep all the sheep together. Like lightning, he can move from one side of the group to the other. Bob the Shepherd makes special whistles to help Moss. Not one loose sheep. Moss is really doing the business. Come by. Get up, Moss. Moss, good boy. Good and boy. he's done it. A good brilliant boy. performance by Sheepdog Moss. But was he quicker than the Fanimals? Let's find out. It's time to declare a winner. The Fanimals herded the sheep in a time of nearly 18 minutes. But Moss did it in one minute, good 47 lad. seconds. Well the done. winner by a mile. Well done, what a relief. Congratulations, Moss. Good boy. <laughs> Every dog has its day, and today Good it's day. all yours. Good boy. And now it's off to Hawaii in the USA. This is Dakota, a Santa Gertrudis bull who's just like any other. He eats, he sleeps, he poos, he pees. Yep, Dakota could be your average bull, but he's not. Dakota's special because he wants one simple thing more than anything in the world. Dakota wants fame. Dakota's decided that he wants to be the Kate Moss of cows, a super moodle, if you like. The one that everyone wants to photograph. 
Helping Dakota in his mission for stardom are his friends Nicole and Steve. Dakota means a lot to us. He's like a brother. We've had him for six years. He's a part of the family. Steve and Nicole obviously think Dakota has what it takes. He has those eyes where it just sees you, just kind of touches you. Dakota already knows what it's like to turn heads. People who drive by here get nervous when they don't see him and they ask me, where is Dakota? But that's not enough for Dakota. Being the most famous cow in his town isn't enough. Dakota wants Beckham-sized world domination. And this is the lady who's going to give it to him. Deb McGuire is the most famous pet photographer in Hawaii for her animal portraits. I'm an animal photographer. I only photograph animals and sometimes pets and their people. Today, Deb's coming to the farm to shoot Dakota. But there's a problem. Just one thing stands between Dakota and his dream. He's one lazy bull. Come, Dakota. Come. Go. Dakota's Come idleness might cost him everything. Photographer Deb really likes taking shots of animals on the go, and, well, Dakota doesn't really do on the go. He just kind of does the same pose. He doesn't like to move around too much. So there's a lot riding on this afternoon. Can Dakota motivate himself for Deb's photo shoot, or will his relaxed nature spell the end of his dream of stardom? We'll soon find out. Here comes Deb. Hey, Deb. Oh, Dakota's right over there. I know. There's no worries for the first part of the shoot. Dakota won't have to move, and that he can do just fine. Work it, Dakota, baby. Everything's going perfectly, and Deb's really impressed. He's fascinating, actually. Um, I love his nose. But as expected, Deb needs a little more. So far, it's going pretty good, but I would like him to get some movement now out of him, so. Uh-oh, this could be the end of everything. Dakota's dream could be over unless he gets his act together. Let's do some running sequences. How oh, about that? Be fun. <laughs> running sequences? I think you might have your work cut out there, Deb. Go on, go. But persuasion can't do it. Let's go. Encouragement from his friends can't do it. Even Please food don't. can't make Dakota move. Come on, Dakota. Come on, Dakota. gonna boy. eat your food. Come on, buddy. Fortunately, Nicole and Steve have an unlikely plan. The best way to get Dakota to really move and get up and going is a lot of times she'll chase this truck. Huh? What do you think? We can try. We can try. We can try. <laughs> So it's the big moment. Can Dakota get his backside in gear? OK, here I go. If Deb can get the shot of Dakota walking, then he's on the road to superstardom. Here we go. Come on, Dakota. Not you, Mr. Horse. Right, let's try again. Let's go, let's go. Come on, come on let's go, Dakota. Come on, boy. What's this? He's moving. Is Dakota going to give Deb the shot she needs? Uh, no. He's decided to eat some grass instead. Oh well. So Dakota's laziness has put pay to his dreams of worldwide fame. Luckily, Deb's obsession with his nose means that she promises to come back for another shoot. Hey, look here. So our wannabe bull will get a second chance. And who knows? Next time you see him, it might well be on a magazine cover. Normal service is being interrupted as we head over to breaking news. Good evening, I'm Johnny Newsman, and this is Animal News. Tonight's top story, love-struck horses get married. Two horses from Somerset have celebrated Britain's first horse wedding. Magic the Bride and Zippy the Groom tied the knot at a ceremony in their hometown of Falkland before enjoying a wedding banquet of carrots and apples. Yum, yum. Their owner told us that the happy couple had been inseparable ever since they first met just five months ago. Let's cross over to our dog on the scene, hoping he's awake, the news hound. Hi, Johnny. I have to say the wedding was lovely, but the lack of juicy burns at the reception afterwards has left this reporter a moochie pooch. Thanks, Newshound. Best wishes to Magic and Zippy from everyone here on the Animal News team. 
Thanks for watching. Good night. And thanks for watching because I'm watching, you're watching me, and we're all watching together. I've been Johnny Newsman, and remember, stay furry. And now we're off to Bedfordshire in the UK. Shiraz is one cool cat. He's a Northwest African cheetah with a need for speed. Much faster than a racehorse to greyhound, cheetahs like Shiraz are the world's fastest land animals. His job is to run so people can study his great movements and, lucky for him, he's great at it. Veterinary PhD student Penny is here with an elite technical team to figure out how they can run so fast. If they can figure out how Shiraz moves, the data can be used to help make better artificial limbs for people who need help moving about. Today we're employing Shiraz as a research assistant and we're going to make him run up and down the enclosure so we can film him using our special high-speed cameras and from that we can look at every little thing that this cheetah is doing as they're running. Cheetahs run around 70 miles per hour. They're able to accelerate from zero to 64 miles per hour in three seconds, faster than most supercars. We don't know what it is about a cheetah that makes it run so fast. So that's what we're hoping to find out today. Penny is recording Shiraz's run with the help of a tiny remote controlled helicopter, underground sensors, and two special high speed cameras. When we look at normal wildlife documentary footage, you can't really see anything like the detail that we can. So with our special cameras that record a thousand frames per second, we can slow it all down and see exactly the little the motion and every little movement that they're making. Shiraz must run in a straight line for the recording equipment to capture his dash. So Penny sets up a tasty treat for him to chase on a device called a lure. So this is the lure, so it's the string that we'll um, have our chicken on so that the cheetahs can chase it and it goes faster than our cheetahs go here at the zoo, so it's nice that we can get them running at their top speeds. Shiraz is eager to go to work. All right, Phil, can you let him out now? And he's excited to say hello. Shiraz is a frisky and curious cat, so he should enjoy the challenge of chasing the lure. If all goes according to plan, Shiraz will chase the lure for his dinner, running directly over the underground sensors, under the helicopter, in front of the two high-speed cameras. Woo! No pressure. There's no telling whether Shiraz will cooperate with the strange little helicopter buzzing overhead. The helicopter is, qu is quiet, but there is the possibility that the noise will disturb actually the cheetah. The experiment's set up and ready to go. Is Shiraz professional enough not to be distracted by the helicopter? It's time to find out. Shiraz is ready, and he's off! He did it! But if you blinked, you might have missed it. Let's see that again. The scientist cameras have caught Shiraz's run in slow motion. The helicopter didn't seem to bother Shiraz at all. Thanks to his incredible focus, job well done. Shiraz has performed really well chasing the lure, so we've got some good footage showing us everything that we need, showing us when Shiraz's feet are on the floor, how he's bending his back, all sorts of things that we can use that to work out how artificial limbs could possibly work. Shiraz's workday has run its course and it's time for dinner. It's all in a day's work for this big kitty. It's not just today that animals have had jobs. In fact, history reveals that in the past, they've had even more amazing jobs than today. And here are those history's heroes! Hello, I'm Professor John Bumbleman, the world's greatest animal historian, as if you forgot. I'm just about to do some exercise because today we are looking at the most sporty working animals in history. Oh, oh. I'm uh, a little bit stiff today. Let's warm up with a few tales of animal athletes. 
first hero athlete of camels, the mighty Ottoman Empire of the 17th century Achille. employed these heroes as taxis because of their incredible stamina. The camels would cover huge distances across deserts and mountains, carrying people, food, and luggage. The camels had to be very fit because the mighty Ottoman Empire spanned three continents. That's a lot of distance to walk. But these camels were so athletic, they didn't just sit around after their day's work was done. No, no, no! To relax, they did a spot of wrestling. Camel wrestling doesn't involve spandex or a half Nelson. Camels wrestle each other by simply leaning heavily on the other. Whoa! Whoever knew camels could be so athletic? Our next animal athlete is Smokey, a Yorkshire Terrier war hero. She was found abandoned in a hole near an army base in New Guinea. The soldiers agreed she was a rather agile young pup and decided to give her a shot at a job in the army. Her heroic moment came when the soldiers were trying to lay a communications cable. The cable needed to go through a long, treacherous, narrow tunnel. They needed a very nimble, athletic little soldier to get the cable through. And so Smokey was given her very first mission. Smokey took the cable, she ran, she ducked, she dived, and pulled that cable through the tunnel in a matter of minutes, earning her place in our countdown of history's athletic animals. Oh, that's much better. I feel more flexible now. All right, and the left, and the who do I say? Who do I say? And no, 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 sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> And on with the show! The accolade for our most athletic animal in history goes to... the flea! You might not think it, but fleas are incredibly athletic and they use to demonstrate their super skills in Victorian flea circuses. Yes, in the late 1800s, fleas were employed as circus acrobats and people would come from all around the world to watch them strut their sporty stuff. The fleas performed incredible feats of agility and strength for their size. They'd pull objects more than 131,000 times their own weight, jump distances more than 150 times their own body length, and even walk a dangerous high wire. Woohoo! And it is these incredible displays of agility that earns the flea their place in history's most athletic working animal. Right? So that's history's most athletic animals. And that's put me in the mood for a good run. <laughs> Goodbye. Chamon. Chamon. Taxi! Come on. And finally, it's back to Costa Rica. Despite being in the perfect setting to live the life of Riley, Hercules is no beach bum. In fact, Hercules is a hero! Along with the faithful co-crusader Ricardo and sidekick Neron, he has the incredibly important job of helping protect turtles from extinction. And it's a role he's pretty good at. Hercules, he never give up and he never surrender. Every morning, Hercules goes on patrol, seeking out turtles' nests, which have been attacked by predators or poachers. Any undamaged eggs he finds are taken to a safe place where they can be hatched and then returned to the wild. Each egg saved is another huge step towards preventing turtles from extinction. This is very serious stuff. And never more serious than this morning, Hercules found a nest which has been attacked by a predator. And it's not looking good. But Hercules isn't ready to give up. He watches on anxiously as Ricardo searches for a glimmer of hope. I'm looking for the remaining eggs to rescue them. Most turtles lay about 110 eggs per nest, but it seems that most of the eggs have already been destroyed by a predator. Have any made it? Yes, a result! some undamaged eggs. Nothing makes Hercules more happy. He can save some turtles after all. Now he needs to get the eggs to safety. It's clear how excited Hercules is about the undamaged eggs. 
back at the sanctuary and straight to the most important area of Hercules' workplace, the turtle hatchery. The hatchery is a totally safe and protected environment. Even its location is a closely guarded secret. It's designed to replicate the very nest from which the endangered eggs were removed, right down to the same sand. The eggs are buried here until they're ready to hatch. This hatchery can hold as many as 30,000 rescued baby turtles at any one time. While Ricardo constructs the new nest, Hercules keeps guard. They incubate from 45 to 55 days. The nests are built. But Hercules' day is far from over. A batch of eggs rescued over a month ago have hatched and are now old enough to leave the sanctuary and be released into the wild. Hercules knows this is cause for celebration. Without him, these little guys wouldn't be here. It's the best part of this dog's job, seeing his baby turtles being released to the ocean. Olive Ridleys like these are one of the smallest species of marine turtles. The hatchlings are about eight centimeters long, so are still vulnerable. Hercules again stands guard, keeping an eye out for birds who see the turtles as lunch. A vulture circles overhead. He's definitely got his eye on the turtles. But with Hercules around, nothing's gonna attack them. They reach the ocean, ready for their first swim. Olive Ridleys get their name from the coloring of their heart-shaped shell, which is gray now, but will become olive green once these turtles become adults. It takes as long as 50 years for them to be old enough to lay eggs of their own. And wherever in the world they swim to, they'll one day come back to this very same beach to lay their own eggs. They will return at the same beach from 10 to even 50 years later for their first hatch. It's the end of another great working day for Hercules, and all these days are going to add up. In a year, long career with Hercules, we released more than 65,000 babies in one year. Congratulations, Hercules. That's something to be really proud of. Keep up the good work. You're not only a hero for the turtles, but for all of us, too. That dog is almost as smart as a goat. Maybe he should present the show. Get out of here. Go on. Show's over. Get out.